Lynn, uh, tell me about your role in the Tate Union and in how you became involved and what age did you become involved? Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what age I was. It was, it was 1979 when I became involved in the trade union uh, and that was with work and um, I actually became uh, an activist in 1980 and that was because I worked in a school at the time, in a special school. There were ten of us who were all in uh, Nalgo as it was and the school was threatened with closure and reorganisation and I got nominated as the steward, actually on the basis that I was the only single uh, person and therefore didn't have to go home and cook the tea was why they, they appointed me as steward. It wasn't because I was politically uh, astute or anything like that, it was just because I could make the tea time meetings. And um, that campaign you had in 1980 um, with the school, was that a successful campaign? Did you save the school? Uh, we, we went through the reorganisation, we didn't lose any jobs, uh, we were relocated um, and yeah, in, in that sense it was successful but uh, um, it wasn't an easy time I don't think and, and certain, but certainly I met people there that I have known for the rest of my trade union life that have found you know uh, very supportive very helpful. So that was your first case mm. it sounds like it was a victory in some mm -hmm. sense yeah so yeah yeah. Well, soon after I left and went <laughs> and moved branch, went to Cheshire branch. Um, and at that point, it was in the middle of the, nurse, the National Nursery Nurses dispute. So uh, we went across to Cheshire and um, the nursery nurses there were just commencing on a work to rule. So um, I became one of the activists. We were split up because Cheshire was a big geographical area into an industrial action committee that had um, six sectors. Um, I was one of the leaders in the six sectors. And... Um, uh, Farrells and Report and, and uh, Neston at that point. So uh, we were involved in two years of uh, struggling. So yeah, it does seem that everywhere I go, there's trouble following me. But honestly, it was it was decided before then. Well, tell me about the work you did with your local branch, because obviously being an active so around, you must have wanted to get more involved uh, within the local branch. Group. Yeah, I mean, first off, we were in the branch, uh, sort of in Wirral branch. Uh, I just got started there, so. At the branch committees there. I mean, remember my first committee, um, it was actually, uh, there was a big case in Wirral at the time, the Paul Brown child abuse case. And so there's an awful lot of social workers. And I've thought now, you know, all the times I've gone through child protection cases because of the, one of the jobs I've done, but certainly now when you look at the baby P case, you know, things haven't changed. Those service conditions issues are still very much in the fore and very much dominating a lot of our um, branch committees, I would imagine. When I moved over to Cheshire, obviously it was industrial action, and then after industrial action you start to think, well, actually these people who run this branch don't know everything they think they know, and I'm sure I could do a better job, so you start challenging for positions, and, and I held a number of positions, including sports and social, which is obvious from my demeanour that I would be a sports and social secretary, but it was the only way to go on the branch executive, so hey-ho. And let's just talk a little bit about the composition of the branch committee. How did you find that? I mean, you were a woman, so did you find it was, it was dominated? Yeah, by it was. It was fairly dominated by males at the time. Um, and to be to be fair, in, in Cheshire, because it was such a big organisation, you had your stewards committee, your education stewards committee, and then you met as a Cheshire education stewards committee and your senior stewards went to the, the executive. So those seats were hotly contested. And once you got on the branch committee, you could either get there as a senior steward or as a branch officer elected from the AGM. And at that time in Cheshire, it, there were a lot of, uh, of men. I have to say that. In all of the time I've worked, men have really helped me along the way. I mean, I met people like Ray McHale and Frank Hunt in Cheshire who are still very active today and have, you know, put us on the straight and narrow, really, to make sure we, we progressed the way we, we could have done. Well, I think it's fair to say that women now are much more active and much more representative at the branch level than we perhaps were in the 80s. That's I can, obviously a good thing. I can certainly remember one conference, TUC conference, getting um, thrown out of the... Uh, the Blackpool, um, because we were doing the, the women's campaign about uh, porn is theory, rape is practice, and having to stick, and we, we raided the newsstand and stuck stickers on the top shelf of the magazines there, and we got a sharp, sharp shift after that. So doing a couple of stunts like that when you're younger is, is far easier. Trade unions have moved on since the yeah. 80s, legislation's changed. Yeah. What do you find is the most uh, significant change that has been over the last 20 years? 
the trade unions? So for trade unions generally, I think it's it's been this erosion of uh, trade union rights and responsibility. It, you know, when I started, um, you know, it was expected you join the trade union. Your family expected you join the trade union. You came from a family. It was all working. You were taught very politically. I'm not sure families now particularly taught politically. It was in your school. You, you know, schools um, talked about having a social conscience and being responsible for others and living in a community, not being individualistic. I think now, you say you're a trade unionist, and there were times in the 80s when you said you're a trade unionist, and you may as well said you had the plague because nobody wanted to talk to you. And actually, I think the, you know, the people view you with real suspicion now. It's interesting, though. People view you with suspicion about being a trade unionist, and yet when their job's under threat, they want the old-style trade unionist walking in and banging the table, even though times have changed on that. You're not going to do that now, but that's how people react to it. And I think we've got good messages that we need to get out to, to people and, and tell them what value the work of a trade union is, because I don't think people realise and I don't think we get those messages out, mainly because I think we're, we've got a media that's very anti-trade unionist. And that's your role now, isn't it, working for the staff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about the job, how long you've worked there, and what the challenges are, and what the successes have been since you've been there. Right, well, I've worked there since 2006, and, I mean, it's a, it's a job come true, because this used to be a hobby of mine. I did it... Uh, on top of my own work so I did a full time job I never had full time secondment so I always did my trade union activity on top of my full time job so I'm now getting paid to do my hobby how lucky is that um, in terms of successes it's difficult to measure because that you never ever do it on your own there's always somebody else so I couldn't claim a success because I've been part of a team that delivers a success that's you know not just staff that's lay activists as well you're never going to get anywhere in a trade union if you talk about your own individual successes, it's what we achieve as a group. And I think things like the LGPS dispute, those sorts of things, were big issues where we got big hits and we made a difference. And they are just the start of what's to come, I'm absolutely LGBTS sure. LGPS being a little bit of a dispute, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, we've now got challenges coming with the public sector workers in terms of Absolutely, cutbacks. absolutely. These are the challenges ahead, I guess. Well, they are the challenges ahead, but then there's still some of the, you know, there are those challenges, but there are still those things that come back to when I first started and we think we've made m great moves with women's rights and women's activity and yet I'm not so sure we have I think you know our union has got 70% women um, they, they're very very active and yet even in today's Guardian we're talking about can women be uh, uh, bishops or what have you I mean in this day and age we should not be having that discussion and I think lots of women are involved in the trade union movement not just for themselves but for their families I know that's certainly influenced me I mean I had a daughter and then I was beginning to think I don't want her going through the things I've gone through I don't want her being discriminated against the way I've been discriminated against so I think that one of the big things of the trade union movement is about equalities and about making sure that people are respected as individuals and that they, they move together and defend defend people's rights uh, on equality issues particularly. So it's still come to work today. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you need more oh, um, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I, you know, I cannot understand anybody walking into a workplace and not being in a trade union. It's madness to me that to even contemplate that anyone would think that would be the thing to do.